Hello, Internet. Okay, this is the third and final HTML definitive tutorial. All that's left is forms. If you missed the previous two videos, you definitely want to watch them first. You will be completely lost. Now on to forms. Forms are where you allow people to interact with your website, send you information, uh, so forth and so on. Basically, this is what an opening form tag looks like. This part tells the browser a form is a common. Here, you are telling the browser that all of the information the person enters should be sent to this application for processing. And you're telling the browser that you want to use a, the method of posting rather than getting. I'll explain what that means. When you post, you have to understand when you are sending form data that variables are created, which are names that you will associate with whatever information the user enters. Now, if you do not want that information to be seen in the link to the web page, then you would use the posting method. If, however, you would like the information, like here, you see email is a variable, and here would be an email address, followed by subject, and the information that a user entered was the word hi, not very exciting, but either way, if you type get, this information will be sent to the browser, and everybody will be able to see all the variables, and their associated data. And if you do not want it to be included, you would use post. The only reason people use get is whenever they want to allow a person to favorite or bookmark a link. So if you don't want that, use post. And that's basically the opening tag for forms. What we got here, you can see down here, all the code that we have up here to create. So what this is, is just a simple text input area. And how you create one of those is input type and to put in text, name, email is going to be the variable that you're going to associate with whatever data they put in, and size tells the browser how many characters length you want this box to be. Break creates a new line. I suppose you know what this means because we talked about this in previous videos. And here is another input text box. Now let's move on to text areas. Let's say you want to create a great big giant box like this. What you can do instead is create bracket text area and then define how many columns long or characters and how many rows deep. This is going to be the variable where that information is stored. And if you put any text in between here and the closing bracket for text area or closing tag, it would appear right there. Let's move on. Here is another text input, and here is a password input. If you type in a password box, you're going to see dots instead of your normal text, like you would see here. Now, if I want to create a radio button, what I would do is enter input type radio and name is the variable I'm going to store this value in if the person chooses to select it. The difference between a radio input box and a checkbox is you can only check one radio button at a time. You can check both checkboxes. And as you can see up here, love radio buttons, that's where this text comes from. It doesn't pull this text, it pulls this. And that's radio buttons and also pretty much checkboxes. The only thing that's going to be different is you put checkbox in here. And, and here is your variable, and here is the data you would store in it. What we have here are two different ways to create drop-down menu selection tools on a browser. Both operate pretty much the same way. What you need to do is put select name, select input, tells them us a selection tool needs to be created. And then you put all of your different options that you want made available on. You have two, but you can put it pretty much as many as you want. It works out the same way. Of course, close it. Line break. And this is identical, except you put option input. Now, 
If you want the information to be sent, you need to create a submit button or a send button as I have here. All you do is put input type submit, value, send. This value is what is going to be displayed on the button. And when the user clicks on that, that information is going to be sent to them. What we're going to do here also is create a hidden text frame and this will not be shown to the user. You would use this if you wanted information to be passed and the user would not be able to see it. Submitted would be the variable name. True in this case would be the value. So what happens if we click send? I jumped over to mail.php and here is all the information I selected. I set this up so that I could jump back to the previous page. That's actually JavaScript, so we're not covering that today. And that after you end the form area is basically every single thing you could ever want to know about HTML. Aside from cascading shops, but cascading style sheets are not HTML. We'll cover that in a future tutorial. If you go to the website, you can download or just copy and paste all of the HTML minus my comments. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Catch you next time.